What's going on guys, it's Dari here, and today we're going to talk about the switch statement in JavaScript. Now before I continue on, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button down below, so you don't miss out on any content. As you can see on my screen, I have created a variable called x and it's equal to 5. Then I want to check inside the if condition, so inside the parentheses I have a condition, where I want to check if variable x is equal to 1. And if it is, I want to console log x is equal to 1. Otherwise, I want to go down below and check if it's equal to 2, 3, 4, or 5. And if it is equal to one of those, I want to print out a specific message. If none of the if and else if statements are true, the else statement will be printed out because the outcome is false. Right now, we are only checking if it's equal to 5 numbers. And you would imagine that your code will not look clean if you keep using else if statements over and over again. In order to make this look cleaner, we can use something called the switch statement. And the switch statement handles exactly what we're doing on the screen right now, but way more efficient than what we're doing right now. What I want to do is to scroll down and right below my if and else if statement, I want to create a switch statement. The way you create a switch statement is pretty similar to the if statement. But instead of writing down if, we basically need to write down switch, space, parentheses, space, opening and closing curly braces. Now inside the parentheses of the if statement, we write down a condition. For the switch statement, it is slightly different. What we need to do is to write down an expression so we could evaluate different statements that we want to execute based on the expression. So what we want to check is variable x again. And we don't want to set it equal to something or to check if it's less than. That will be done inside the switch statement. So let's go inside our curly braces. And what we want to do is to create a case. So let's write down case, space. And now we could write down the condition that we would like to check. So let's say 1. So we're basically checking if variable x is equal to 1. Be aware that we also need to end it with a colon. So let's hit enter now. And on the line below, we need to write down what we want to do if it is equal to 1. So let's do the same thing for the if statement and just console.log x is equal to 1. Inside double quotes, of course. Now, right after our console log, we need to add one more thing. That's it, enter. And right here, we need to add a break statement. And we simply need to write down break and we need to end it off with a semicolon. And the reason why we add a break is because this basically indicates the end of this case, so the end of case number one. So what's happening right here is that we're going to check if variable x is equal to one, then we will print out a console log, and if the case has been met, the break will indicate that it could leave the case and it's done right here. We could add as many cases as you want, so let's go on the line below, and let's create case to see if variable x is equal to 2. On the line below, let's hit a console.log. And we basically want to say x is equal to 2. And we need to add a break. And for 3, 4, and 5, let's just copy paste it. So let's change the third one to 3, fourth one to 4, and the last one to 5, and the string as well. So to 4, and the last one to 5. And if we compare our switch to the if statement right now, you can see that we have one if, and the rest are all else ifs inside our if statement. And they are all equal to a specific case. There's nothing like the else statement that we have down here. So what if all, case, what if all options in our switch are not true? What will happen then? What we could do is to add a default. So let's go right below our last break. Let's hit enter again. And let's write down default, colon, space. And let's add a string right here. And let's say, well, what do we have for our if statement? No match found. So no match found. Let's end it off with a semicolon. Let's save it. And now you can see that x is equal to 5 has been printed out. This was it for this video about the switch statement. And in the next video, I want to dive into loops and iterations in JavaScript. If you do enjoy my videos and you want to see more, 
Leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.